Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the history of ColourPop. And their story is actually really interesting. I have done three brands in this series now. I'm kind of calling it like the rise and fall of blank. We have done Anastasia Beverly Hills, Urban Decay, and Too Faced. And I made a playlist with these, so if you would like to see any of them, I'll leave it linked down below. But ColourPop, their story is actually very different. Like the other three have a lot in common, but ColourPop is kind of an anomaly and we're gonna touch on that today. Now I've kind of already done a version of this video. Now that video wasn't as much of a deep dive as it was a get ready with me and I was sharing some things that I had found about the brand and kind of how they started. So I wasn't sure if I would do ColourPop in this series because I had kind of already done a video similar. But when I asked you guys on my community tab what brand you wanna see next, I did have quite a few requests for ColourPop and they had a lot of thumbs up and I felt like this would be a good time to do that video better. I feel like in that video, there were some holes in it. There were some things that I've learned since then that I'm really excited to share today. So if you're new here, my name is Kelly. In addition to these brand deep dives, I love just talking about makeup in general here on this channel. I focus on cruelty-free beauty and I especially love drugstore makeup. I am starting that Affordable Friday series that I promise. So you can catch some drugstore makeup from me every single Friday and new videos from me four times a week. So if you like this, be sure to subscribe and let's go ahead and hop into it. Okay, if you see me holding my teeth throughout this video, it is less for like drinking and more for warmth. If you live in an old building like I do, you know the radiator struggle when it when it's like almost spring and the weather is fluctuating a lot and the radiator schedule becomes like really inconsistent because one day it'll be 60 degrees so they won't have it on and then it will be like 20 degrees but you can't control the heat. That's what this is. So uh, if you have a radiator, you get it. So ColourPop started in 2014, which is so recent. Like they have been around less than 10 years, which is unbelievable based on the brand recognition, the success, the popularity of ColourPop. Like it's shocking that they have not even reached their 10 year anniversary yet. And I think that's part of what makes their story fascinating because the other three brands we've done in this series were, were all started in the 90s. And a lot of the big like legacy brands have been around closer to like the 100 year mark. So for ColourPop to kind of have changed the industry in the last 10 years is very impressive. Though they technically started in 2014, our story actually starts way before that. All the way back in the mid 50s with a man named Walter Spatz. And you're probably like, who the heck is that and what does he have to do with ColourPop? Now, Walter Spatz, oddly enough, is actually the inventor of the ballpoint pen. And he also started Spatz Laboratory which was a manufacturer, packager, and formulator for makeup for decades. And they actually manufactured a lot of makeup products for big, 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 big brands. I'm talking like brands under the L'Oreal umbrella, like huge global brands were made in this laboratory. Now it's located in California, just like ColourPop. And in 1989, the Nelson family purchased Spatz Labs. Now, prior to this, the family had no background in cosmetics, which is where the ColourPop story really differs from the other three that we talked about. Like I said, I'll have that playlist linked down below, but with those other three brands, they were started by someone that loved makeup and had a vision for the beauty space. ColourPop was started from a very business-minded standpoint. Prior to even purchasing Spatz Labs, the, the father of the Nelson family, his background was in aerospace. So nothing, like not even close to anything in the cosmetics realm prior. Now, after purchasing Spatz Labs, they continued to run that way for decades, producing products for a lot of major brands. And this continued until 2014, when the Nelson siblings Laura and John decided to start Seed Beauty. Now it's likely that you've heard of Seed Beauty, but if you have not, Seed Beauty is a brand incubator. And I did a full video last summer about brand incubators. They're really popping up everywhere and most new brands that we're seeing are coming out of these brand incubators, especially celebrity brands. And Seed Beauty, while it wasn't obviously the first brand incubator because these exist outside of the cosmetic industry. But Seed Beauty, 
I would say has been the inspiration for a lot of these that have been popping up. So in 2014, that was when they created Seed Beauty and their vision was to create a brand incubator because they thought, you know, for all these years, we've been producing products for other brands and they had been working in the business to business side of things. But then they started thinking, you know, we have everything on site. Why don't we sell these directly to consumers and try something business to consumer? Because we already have all the resources. We're already formulating the products, making them, manufacturing them, packaging, like we're doing it all. Why don't we do it all for some of our own brands? Like, why don't we try that? So they launched ColourPop in May, 2014. And I'm about to blow your mind with this timeline, but I was listening to, well, I was reading like the transcript from a podcast that John Nelson was interviewed on. And he said that they created ColourPop, the first Seed Beauty brand. They created ColourPop in 12 weeks. I had to read that back. I was like, did he mean 12 months, like like a year? No, he said they created it in 12 weeks. He even noted that that was like incredibly fast. Like I just even wanna pause here to consider that they started an entire brand in a few months when a lot of these big global brands, it takes far more than 12 weeks just to launch like a bronzer. So the fact that they could launch this brand in just a few months is so fast, like so, so fast. I can't get over that. And right in the podcast, John Nelson said they weren't really sure what to expect. Like obviously they're hopeful, but they didn't really go into it knowing that ColourPop would be what ColourPop is today. And he said he went into it with the mindset of if it works, great. If it doesn't, at least we learned something. Uh, he wanted to get more knowledge on e-commerce and social media. And he was like, you know what, hopefully it works, but if it doesn't, at least we'll have some of those takeaways. And as we know, it definitely worked. ColourPop blew up. They actually broke even in the first nine months and they continued to grow for years until Seed Beauty, again, that brand incubator, added the second brand to their portfolio with Kylie Cosmetics. Now, I don't wanna to spend too long on Kylie Cosmetics because that's a whole separate thing. And I actually did a video about Kylie Cosmetics last summer. I can leave it linked down below, but Kylie is kind of important to the story because it is also under the seed umbrella. And though they're not the same brand, like they at the time were made in all the same factories and whatnot. However, Kylie Cosmetics is now owned by a different parent company, which is Cody. So again, I'll leave that Kylie video linked. But around this point, Seed was exploding, it was growing rapidly, and they were kind of facing a tough decision of do we still manufacture other brands' products at Spatz Labs, or do we just focus on Seed Beauty with our own brands? Because at this point, it was kind of becoming a conflict of interest. You know, you have these global brands thinking, okay, you're making these products for us, and then you are our direct competitor. Also, it was just a big undertaking, and they wanted to focus more on Seed Beauty, so that was what they did, and they kind of shifted away from producing products for up from other brands. And then as we know, around 2017, they launched KKW Beauty under the seed umbrella, and then more brands under that umbrella, including Fourth Ray, Soul Body, Tati Beauty. As we know, some of those brands have now closed. Some of them are owned by other parent companies, but there were a lot of different ventures under the Seed Beauty brand incubator. Now, one thing ColourPop did very differently in the beginning than they do today, they launched very slowly and very deliberately. In that first year, I could only find two product launches. That was for me like going through YouTube videos, trying to figure out like the time frame of them. In that first year, it was just the Super Shock Shadows and the Lippy Sticks. And then in that second year, we got the Ultra Matte. And as we know, they grew very rapidly. You could not escape the popularity of ColourPop. They were in every YouTube video. And what ColourPop does differently than a lot of other brands is they create products very tailored to consumer demands. Now, obviously that is like the business model of any business, but ColourPop is able to do it differently because they do everything in-house and on-site. So the turnaround time is so hard for other brands to compete with. In that podcast interview, uh, John Nelson had mentioned that with some of the brands they were working with before they started their Seed Beauty brands, it wasn't unusual for it to take two years to take a product from like concept to consumer. But less, Laura, excuse me, Laura Nelson has said in an interview that the Seed Beauty brands can do that in five 
days, five days concept to consumer. Can you imagine coming into work on Monday and you guys are all working together like, you know what? We're going to launch an eyeshadow palette this Friday and you start like putting it together and you work on it. And then like by the end of the work week, the palette, you can purchase it online. That is so fast. Now, I'm not saying that every launch happens in that time frame. I would assume that's not the case at all, but the fact that they have the ability to do that is unheard of. But it's very intentional. Laura Nelson has said in interviews that ColourPop and see beauty brands in general are like the fast fashion of makeup. And that was their vision from the beginning. They wanted things to come out quickly. They wanted to respond to consumer demands immediately. And one thing you'll notice things don't really stay around very often, which is different than a lot of other brands and different than what we were seeing at that time frame. So if you guys remember like 10, 20 years ago in makeup, we didn't see as many like limited edition collections. A lot of products were introduced and they were staples in a collection. They were permanent items. They remained, you could buy them all the time. That is almost never the case with ColourPop. Pretty much nothing is permanent. It'll be around for a bit, and if it's very successful, they will restock it. If it's not, they're, it's done. And not every brand really has the luxury to do that, but because ColourPop can completely control how many they're making, because they don't have like limits like other brands do on factories, like having to produce a minimum, ColourPop can kind of do whatever they want. They can tailor what they're selling to consumer demands. Do you guys remember when the nine pans were coming out in different colors? And they would ask on their Instagram like every week, like what color do you want to see next? And then like immediately we would see that color. They would be like, okay, you want a green one? Cool, by Friday, we'll give you a green one. This is very unique in the beauty space. Very few brands have the ability to do that. Now, that being said, the business model that ColourPop kind of introduced has been spreading. A lot of other brands are trying to replicate it, but that's part of the reason when you look at bigger brands, I'll use Urban Decay as an example. I often hear people describe their launches as late, saying, you know, I just, just feel so late, like it should have come out at this time. Well, they probably were working on it at that time, but they just don't have the ability to turn things around as fast as ColourPop. Another thing I wrote in my notes was how much the explosion of social media aided in the growth of ColourPop. So at the time that ColourPop was launched and then Kylie Cosmetics, this was kind of like the golden era for social media makeup. The internet could sell makeup, and I, it still can, especially over on TikTok. But because ColourPop was really pushing a fast fashion model, that aligned pretty well with the boom of social media in that time period. Like, they were kind of growing together. And I mean, even when we think of fast fashion in the actual fashion industry, the speed in which trends turn over can also be incredibly influenced by social media. You can see this quite clearly on TikTok with a lot of micro trends where there's one shirt or pattern that has a boom for a couple of weeks and then it's old news and then something else is new. And social media really like plays in well with that fast fashion mindset because it can make something so built up in one moment and then be old news in the next. So the timeline, I need both hands for this, but the timeline that ColourPop was starting and the growth of social media, especially like Instagram, YouTube, beauty content, was so serendipitous that they could kind of feed off one another. And it's pretty obvious that ColourPop has shifted the beauty industry when it comes to frequency of launches. Now, it's not just a ColourPop thing, but they're a brand that most of us can identify as kind of speeding up this timeline. If you looked at beauty launches 10 years ago, they did not happen at this frequency. But now, like if you follow the Trend Mood One account, there are multiple new launches announced every single day, like sometimes multiple within the hour. Like I do a new like beauty launches, like purchaser pass video, probably every two weeks at this point. And there's always a surplus of products to talk about. I could probably do a weekly series and I know a lot of YouTubers do just because the sheer number of launches that are constantly coming out. But in addition to the speed being impacted by ColourPop, I would also say the number of brands has also been impacted by ColourPop. 
and specifically by Seed Beauty. Because we have had so many makeup brand incubators pop up in the last few years trying to completely replicate that concept and making celebrity brands the same way Seed Beauty made KKW, Kylie. A lot of this has been influenced by ColourPop. The way a lot of brands utilize social media to promote their products, again, influenced by ColourPop. They're not the only brand that utilizes social media and kind of jump-started this. I would say it's also brands like Anastasia Beverly Hills, Huda Beauty, but ColourPop is another big one. And I would say ColourPop utilizes social media in a more interactive way than a lot of other brands do. With ColourPop, they will ask, what collab do you want to see? What color palette do you want to see? And then they will come out with that almost immediately. I mean, the collabs take a little bit longer because there's more work behind the scenes. But like I referenced earlier, when they were doing the monochromatic nine pans, they would ask, what color do you wanna see next? And like, they would give it to you within the week. Now, let's talk about my thoughts on ColourPop today. So as we know, this series is called The Rise and Fall, but I wouldn't say ColourPop has fallen off as much as the other three brands that we've noted in this series. Though I have noticed the public perception of ColourPop shift in the last few years. And seemingly a lot of that has fallen back on mostly the frequency of launches. I know a lot of people just don't like that, but also there have been a lot of critiques about the repetition in launches. So we will notice ColourPop launch one palette, discontinue it, and then relaunch something eerily similar. They will discontinue a lipstick and then they will relaunch something new in different packaging and it will be almost identical. ColourPop also very rarely restocks products. That was kind of a reason I feel like I stopped purchasing from them for a while because I would hear rave reviews about a product. I would have so many subscribers say, you need to get this. And I would try and I would be on the website constantly, but it would never be restocked. It was more about the new. But again, going back to the whole theme of this video, that's their business model. They're focused on the new because that's what's drawing more eyes in. That's what's getting them more attention, more buzz, restocking products doesn't necessarily fit into that for them. And that's why they're the fast fashion of makeup because that's what they wanna be, that's what they're trying to be. If you look at ColourPop five years ago compared to today, I have noticed, and again, this is just my interpretation of what I've heard from subscribers in my comment section and other comment sections here in the beauty space, I know a lot of people are just feeling fatigue when it comes to ColourPop. And that's how I personally feel with the brand. There was a while that I did keep up and I would place pretty frequent ColourPop orders. But for me now, now I'm not speaking for anyone other than myself with this, but something will launch and I'll want it. And by the time I go to the website to get it, like four more things have launched and then I no longer want that original thing because it feels old. But then I don't know if I want the new thing. Personally, I find them to be rather overwhelming and I feel like I can't keep up. So I've almost stopped trying to. That being said, they're obviously still a very successful brand. And like I said, I wouldn't say that they have fallen the way a lot of the other brands in this series have but I don't know that they have the impact that they once did. And let me know your thoughts down below. Like, where do you stand on ColourPop? Do you still get excited about their launches? Have you lost a bit of interest in the brand? Let us know down below. I'll have the playlist for this series linked as well. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this one and I will go ahead and see you guys in my next one. Bye.